Hey everybody, the Zen Witch here with another unboxing video. This is an oracle deck today called The Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed This is the first of her decks that I have reviewed, I do believe. And I honestly don't know how many of her decks I have. Um, one of these days I'm going to do like a fucking, what do they call it? You know, the spreadsheet thing, Excel. I'll do a fucking Excel and put all my decks in with the publishers and the authors and all that kind of stuff so that I can cross-reference and do all those things that my Mercury and Virgo loves so much. At any rate, this is Colette Baron reed The Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards, a 52-card deck and guidebook. Published uh, by Hay House. Hay House, publisher of many good decks. Okay, let's see what the back says. The Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed is a 52-card divination system, an inspirational tool to bridge the unseen world of spirit and the physical world of our day-to-day -day lives. Based on the rich mythology of ancient Britain's Isle of Avalon and the wisdom teachings of its priestesses, these cards and the accompanying guidebook will help you find valuable and powerful insights in all aspects of life as you chart your path and manifest your destiny with clarity and purpose. Their use will shed light on what has been, what needs illumination in the present, what will weave patterns into the future. The deck will help you discover the potential of your own intuition as you follow the omens and symbols of the goddess and kingdom of the fairies. Of the goddess, the kingdom of the fairies, Merlin, and the priestess of magical Avalon. See into the future and discover that you are more than you know. And it says, Design Amy Rose Grigoriou. Cover illustration, Gary A. Lippincott, printed in China. So um, this is where I get to find out if uh, Colette Baron reed is just the author and we're burying the artist as usual. Yes. Okay. So let's identify that first. Here's the guidebook. Here is Hay House. And this is copyright 2007. Um Looking for um, attributions here. Published and blah, 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 blah. Published and distributed. Published and distributed. Editorial supervision. Editorial consultation. Design. Amy Rose Gregorio. Illustrations. Okay, wait a minute. Editorial supervision. Jill Kramer. Editor. Okay, so that comes first. So design. Yes, design is Amy Rose Gregorio. And then illustrations, Gary A. Lippincott. That's very confusing to me. Um, and nowhere on the copy, yeah, copyright Colette Baron reed but she obviously doesn't do the artwork. Contents, how to use the cards and the wisdom, blah, blah, blah. We'll come to that next. <clears throat> Directional on the back, so you can very easily tell from the back of the cards whether they're upright or reversed. Ooh, looky gold, ah. Okay. These cards have keywords on them, and you know what a fan I am of keywords. It just makes things so much easier to get away from the book, you know. So the Merlin is the number one card. Alchemy, Justice, Balance. Look at the dragon. And at the top here, okay, so we have different sections of this deck, too. In the first section, as it says at the top, are the Messengers of Avalon. So first messenger is Merlin, second is the High Priestess, Discernment, Prescience, Prophecy, Vision. Okay. The King, Man, Authority, Male Sexual Energy, Things Pertaining to the Law, and Justice. It's nice to see a reference to sexual energy index. That's one thing that's like super missing from standard tarot, considering it's something that has driven the world since there has been humans, <laughs> we don't really talk about sexual energy too much in the Tarot. Maybe, you know, the Ace of Wands. Okay. Then the Queen, Woman, Fertility, Feminine Power, Sexuality, and Friendships. Then we have the Novice, Innocence, Beginner, Ignorance, New Skill Without Practice, unstable curiosity. Those are great meanings. There's a lot to choose from there. So, you know, you're doing a reading with this. Um, 
there's just a lot to choose from that could fit what you're asking about. Then we have the Grail Knight, Romance, Illusion, Seeking the Sacred. The Bard, Music, Poetry, Myth, History, the Enchantment of Storytelling. The Lady of the Lake, Absolute Truth, Courage, Self-Respect, and Responsibility. I really like that. Just the, I mean, all of those together. Absolute Truth, first of all. Is there such a thing? Um, one could argue that the universe is made up of absolute truth, that its laws are its laws and it must follow them. So at the basis of things, the laws of physics and universal law, that would be how I would interpret absolute truth. But uh, when you get to life on earth as a human being, it's very subjective <laughs> and very changeable. Okay. Absolute truth, courage, self-respect, and responsibility. Then we go to animal guides of Avalon. So the first eight cards are the messengers, and then we're into animal guides. The eagle. So, I mean, you could almost use these as separate little chunks, you know, for messages, for um, animal guides, things like that. Eagle is spirit, integrity, and connection to the angelic realm. The raven, magic, coincidence, synchronistic, events. The hawk, omens and messages. So you see now the meanings are also getting a little more simple. Uh-oh. Sorry, call you back. <laughs> hawk is omens and messages. The swan, transformation, trusting the psychic gifts. Swans are assholes. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> if you've ever been out in a boat or on a jet ski and there's swans, you know what I'm talking about. So I, you know, I think about different things when a swan comes up. But this one is transformation and trusting the psychic gifts. And transformation there, I mean, think about the whole, old, the whole ugly duckling turning into a swan thing. So that makes sense. But swans are assholes. The owl, deception and wisdom. Both of those things. The frog, cleaning house, releasing emotional baggage interesting. I guess, you know, I don't know, being amphibious, being one of the ultimate transformers, frogs go through several changes. Spider, creative projects, period, done. The bee, luck, industriousness, and sweet, sweet victory. We have the stag, pride, and leadership. The cat, independence, and healthy boundaries. That's why I like cats. The dog, loyalty, sincerity, unconditional love. The cow, nourishment, abundance, asking, receiving. Wasp, anger, retaliation, and jealousy. Uh, they're assholes too. Deer, gentleness, and diplomacy. The serpent, knowledge, and healing. The dragon, power and strength. Butterfly is beauty. Horse, accepting help from another, delegating authority. Okay, so we've got, that's the 26 card. Um, so what would that be? 17 cards from 9 through 26 there, of animals. So a lot of animals. Now we are into the guides of fairy. Physical health, grounding, foundations. And I like that we have a woman of color here as the first fairy. I mean, look at her hair, look at everything. Where She's definitely um, otherworldly looking and definitely not your standard white fairy. I appreciate that. The water fairy, feelings and emotions. We have a very Asian vibe there. The um, earth fairy. Did I say that? Physical health, grounding, and foundations. Okay, then feelings and emotions. The wind fairy, another fairy of color. Hallelujah. Thoughts, words, intellectual analysis. 
definitely going along with the, the classic meanings of the elements. So that's very nice. Then we have the fire fairy, creative action and optimism and also non-white. Yes. Then we've got the goblin, the wounded human ego. <laughs> okay. And now the guides, those are all the guides. So we've only got, what was it? Five guides of fairy and they are elemental. And, and one for the ego. We've got four for the elements and one for the ego. That rocks. I see myself using this deck a lot more in the future here. It's been a while since I've looked at it. The, the perils of having a big collection. Okay. The sacred journey markers are the next group. So we have partnership. And these don't have keywords because they are their own keywords. So the sacred journey markers are partnership focus, which my camera refuses to do very well today or any other day. Wealth. That's like a photograph. I mean, everything else has been drawings completely. But now here, I mean, we're coming into images that absolutely look like photographs. And if that's not a photograph, then I don't know what. Okay. Wealth. Restriction, and we've got symbols on these two. You see that little symbol at the top there on partnership? And there's focus, an arrow going to the target. I like these images. Wealth, sort of a squiggly line. Restriction. So it kind of looks like um, gates, you know, a gate built, that looks like to me. But again, that's a photograph. Got to be. Movement, like water. So it looks like filtered photographs. I mean, this one looks like it's been, um, you know, there's like a contrast or there's been a filter applied to it. Joy. The sun. Protection. Disruption. The lightning bolt. Risk and all, and these symbols show up in the image as well. See that? And there's an image. So, uh, whether they're well, loud or quiet, you see the lightning bolt there. Um, the whatever symbol is up here shows up in the image as well. Risk, communication. There's the spiral. Perception. And the eyeball. What is the eyeball? Don't make a liar out of me now. Hmm. I don't really see the eyeball unless that's supposed to be it right here. I think that's supposed to be it. Kind of hard to tell. Let me know if you see it. Burden. And again, hard to see the flag. Oh, be consistent, people. I'm sure it's in there. Letting go. Yep, see there's the symbol there. Maybe that's the flag. I don't know. Anyway, letting go. Love. There's the symbol. Death. Trust. Fear. Forgiveness. Birth, rebirth. Truth and the mystery. So there's the deck. Let's look at the book because, I mean, right away when you have cards that are grouped, it's a really interesting thing to, uh, for instance, separate those groups. And when you're doing a reading, take one of each. So you could take one of a messenger and then an animal guide and then you know, one of the fairy guides and then one of the, what was it, the sacred journey markers and, you know, get the full reading by separating the groups like that. That would be pretty cool. Um, let's see what they say when we look at how to use the cards. Um, so there's an introduction talking about Avalon and the goddess. Um, not going to read that. Um Okay, so she talks about kind of how to med meditate, how to use the cards. When you open the box, spend a little time holding them, become familiar with the images. 
A prayer of invocation to bless and, and empower your cards. Dear Goddess, I invoke your power of love and discernment as I use these cards to guide me along the path to Avalon and my soul and for the manifestation of my true purpose for the greatest good. Show me only what is best and true for myself and for others. Let only light shine, blessed be. Okay, I can't argue with the let only light shine. You know, there's darkness too. Okay, anyway, purpose of the cards. Um, they have a sacred purpose, which is to help you connect with the divine flow. How to do a reading, say your prayer and quiet your mind. A single card reading, shuffle the deck, and then pick one. Um, and she does give a sample reading here. Um, okay. For a one-card reading, and there's a sample of a three-card reading. Reveals the past, present, and potential direction of future events. Five-card reading will give you a more in-depth look at your situation. Shuffle the cards. So she doesn't suggest that you separate them. Um, but I think that would be a really interesting thing to do. And to, to like, create a reading, a spread around that. You know, here's what the messenger says. Here's what the animal says. Here's what, you know, I think that would be an interesting thing to do. Messengers of Avalon. So we have the uh, Merlin and the three keywords and then just a more in-depth delineation of those keywords, but not too long, just a page. So it looks like there's a lot that you could read through. Let's take one of these. I'm asking for a message for my viewers right now. I'm going to shuffle through three times this way, kind of like this way. Let's try do a riffle and see how it goes. Let's go sideways. I think this is going to be an epic failure. Wow, it wasn't. Let's try shuffling them this way. <laughs> A little more failure than going sideways. This is something that I've learned from watching other people's reviews of decks is that people shuffle um, from this, the side edge like this, and it does tend to work. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut shuffle through one more time, and then I'm going to cut the deck. So message for my viewers. Fear. Wow. Okay. That's card number 48. This marker asks you to identify how fear may be affecting you on this part of your journey. Are you afraid of failure? Perhaps you're worried about success and the changes it brings as it pushes you to be all you can be. Are you afraid of losing something you don't yet have? Is your fear valid? Have you seen actual evidence of adversity and trouble, or are you seeing false evidence which gives the appearance of being real? So yeah, false evidence appearing real is one of those acronyms that people use for fear. Fear is a crippling companion and indicates a loss of faith and connection to the divine. Remember that the god slash goddess doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. And I, I would argue with that a little bit. Um, I mean, I've said that before, but sometimes life is overwhelming, no matter how hard we try, and we need to be a little bit easier on people. Fear comes from the part of you that identifies with separation, division, and form in re to release yourself from it. Remember that you are first and foremost an infinite soul. Look through those eyes, and the fear will subside as you remember to trust the way of mystery. Don't struggle with fear. Look inside, see the part of you that is afraid, and send love, light, and compassion inward. This would be a very good time to write an inventory of your fears and their possible solutions. Once on paper, you may find that you've been afraid of fear itself. This is an auspicious omen of transformation. And fear is definitely like one of the biggest things that we deal with as human beings. And, you know, me as an individual, um, because I am pooped from Hogwarts and my energy levels are low, I've, I'm in a fibro flare and that kicks my anxiety off big time. Also, the fact that we're in a Mercury retrograde in Pisces, that doesn't help. But um, fear sometimes can be a forgetting of reality 
and we go it's a going into our own heads and the what ifs rather than here's actually what's happening and identifying whether there is an an actual threat or not so um i think it's a really valid card for where a lot of us are right now um in this world there are some very fearful things happening there are things that certainly warrant fear so the first step is to validate the fear is there something actually to be afraid of or is this a generalized free-floating nebulous anxiety um, I know that when I start getting fearful of things particularly money the antidote for me is to get things down on paper and find out the actual totals and the bottom lines and if there really is something to fear. Um, and that can apply in other cases as well. I had an excellent, excellent counselor um, when I was doing like my first real big core work. And I would call her in a panic. You know, I would call her because I was having a panic attack and the thing that she would do is make me identify it. She would make me name it. What are you most afraid of? And most of the time, um, it, as it was coming out of my mouth, I, it would sound ridiculous. It would show itself, you know, it, it, the, the transparency of it would be apparent. Um, like I would call and, you know, be in a panic attack and she'd say, what, what are you most afraid of? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to die. And, blah, 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 and it'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to die. But things like, um, I remember one time cause I was single mom and my kid was, you know, less than two years old. And I called and she said, what are you most afraid of? And I said, I'm, you know, having these panic attacks and I'm afraid that I'm going to pass out and be unconscious and I'm not going to be able to take care of my daughter. And I actually would go and unlock the door so, you know, the EMS could get in without breaking the door down. And she said, well, you know, actually, if you were to pass out, you would just come to again. You know, your things would regulate themselves and you would gain consciousness again before anything bad happened and it would all be OK. And I have experience with passing out because I used to do it a lot um, with blood pressure drops and stuff. And um, and so it was a good way to, you know, just factual. She would just face it with factual information and it would really allay my fears a lot. So I invite you to name your fears, name what you are most afraid of, say it out loud to somebody else and let them have a go at it and, you know, see if you can mitigate it in that way. So again, very cool deck, really beautiful deck. Um, I have done some readings from this and gotten a lot of good information. Definitely would recommend it, particularly if you're into Arthur and, you know, Mists of Avalon and all those sorts of things. And you notice you don't see any of the Arthurian characters here. This is strictly about um, the whole, you know, maybe from the Mists of Avalon, the whole priestesshood and the magical end of it and this sort of... Uh, the roots of um, mystical Britain. Maybe we can put it that way. So anyway, let me know what you think down below. Please like and subscribe. I put out new Tarot unboxing videos every Monday and new Oracle unboxing videos every Friday. And I will keep buying new ones once I run out of all the ones that I have. I will keep buying new ones so I can keep this going. If you enjoy this channel, share it with people. Let them know. Let me know what you'd like to see. I like to have conversations with you. I love when people comment on my videos. And fortunately, my channel is small, and I think it's probably going to stay that way. So I do have the ability to answer and to have conversations with you. So let's engage, and um, I'll see you next time. Blessed be. This is Liz Enwich.